So when I first started flying drones back in 2016 with DJI's Phantom 4, I was mostly interested in its photo and video capabilities. Being able to put a camera literally anywhere I wanted inspired me to find angles I couldn't reach with a traditional camera. Something different that quickly caught my eye right off the bat back in 2016 though was mapping. At first, I didn't quite understand what the potential benefits of making a map or model with my drone were. I was just highly interested in the automation of the entire process, from takeoff to capturing the image on a predefined route to returning it home to landing to then processing all that data to make one big picture one big map again highly interesting to me and it was kind of a glimpse into the future of what we could use automation with drones for to actually get actionable data from them fast forward from that point in 2016 to eight years later now in 2024 and we've made such great progress through hardware and software that drone mapping is an established industry helping various groups across dozens of industries collect data that is used to make informative decisions decisions and learn more about the structures, areas, and landscapes that we interact with every single day. So if we're going to be making a map with our drone, we've got to understand the three pillars that go into the workflow. The first is the mission planning. The second is the hardware and camera payload that's used to actually collect and capture the data along that predefined mission. And then is the data processing, right? It's actually taking all those photos and stitching them together to make our map. The main issue with this workflow in the past was that one aspect of the pipeline was typically a third party option. For instance, you'd have a piece of software that is great for automated flight planning, but then then you need to find a compatible drone and a piece of software to stitch it all together. There's also great processing platforms that have the ability to also plan automated missions, but those companies usually only make software. They don't actually make the hardware, the drone that's flying. So you still need to find an aircraft that is suitable and compatible with that software. This is why DJI's pipeline for making a map from start to finish is an effortless experience. To give you a top-down view of that entire process, the mission is first set up in the flight route section of the pilot app. You'll obviously use one of their drones like the Mavic 3 Enterprise or the M350 with various payloads to collect the data. And then you can use DJI Terra to process the images that you capture right on your computer. Because this process is so tightly integrated, it makes moving from step to step very fluid. So what I want to do in today's video is go over how to make a map with DJI's entire ecosystem of mapping tools from start to finish. Now in this video, we're going to specifically talk about making 2D maps and we're going to touch a little bit on 3D modeling, but I want to save that for for its own video. It's going to be kind of like a follow-up part two to this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that in the coming days here on the channel. So our first step is to plan the mission, the route that our drone is going to automatically fly when we get out on site. Now, what's great is we can actually pre-plan this mission while sitting here in the office. You can also plan it when you get out there on site if you want to get eyes on where you're actually going to be making the map. But in this case, where we're going to be planning our test mission, I've already been there a handful of times. It's a job that I'm working. So I can plan it here and then go out and make any adjustments that I might need to based on the area that I'm looking at. And what's great is once this mission is planned, and saved here on the controller. I can run it for weeks, months, years, however long I want to. All I need to do is show up, program, load this mission, and then hit go, and the drone will do its thing. So the mission that I want to plan is here in Philadelphia down by Penn's Landing, which is being ripped up to make a brand new park. I've been working with the contracting company to document the demolition and want to start capturing a 2D map of the area to document its progression over the years of construction. So what better way to get started with this project than in this video where I'll show you how to make a map using DJI's entire ecosystem of mapping tools from start to finish. And of course, starting with step one here, we'll be planning our flight mission. So when we jump into our remote controller, we'll open up the Pilot 2 application and go to the flight route section on the left side there. This here brings up an entire catalog of all of our automated missions saved to the controller for this specific drone. So from here, if we want to create a brand new map, we'll tap on the plus icon in the top right corner, press on create route. And from here, because we're making a map, we'll select on area route right there in the center. Now, once we found the area that we want to set up our mission to capture our map, it's as simple as tapping on the screen to set up a predefined area that the drone can fly within to capture images that will later stitched together into our 2D ortho mosaic map. So from here, it's as simple as just pressing on the screen, setting up our predefined area around Penn's Landing here. And once we finished, once we set up our box, we can press on that final waypoint that's going to create our predefined area. Now we can go ahead and tweak this just a little bit. So I am going to be a little bit picky about where this drone flies to make sure that we cover everything we need to. And if you have an area that isn't a perfect rectangle like mine, you can grab on one of these um, middle pieces here, one of these plus 
plus icons and actually predefine your route to be a little bit more specific and a little bit more custom but because i've got an area that's like a perfect rectangle this will work well for me now from here we can select the drone we'll be using which in this case is the mavic 3 enterprise we'll tap on okay and from here, DJI does a lot of the work for you. It set up a really great flight route for us, but we can make changes over on the right side as we need to based on the parameters of the data that we want to collect. Now, the first thing we can choose is ortho collection or oblique collection. This is basically the difference between a 2D or 3D capture, which again, for this video, we'll be capturing a 2D ortho mosaic map. 3D modeling is gonna be saved for its own separate video. So for this sake, we'll be selecting ortho and changing the settings accordingly. Now we can change our GSD, which is the resolution of the final map that's created. So this is measured in centimeters per pixel. And as you change this, it's kind of going to push and pull on the altitude as well. Because if you think about it, the lower your drone is, the closer it is to the ground, the higher the resolution of your final map is going to be because you're closer to the subject capturing more photos. So you'll notice here, let's say if we change our altitude to 200 feet because the buildings aren't taller than 200 feet in this area and press OK. This is now going to lower our centimeters per pixel. So now we have a higher resolution image and DJI Terra, or I'm sorry, DJI Pilot in this case, has done all the work for us actually adjusting our flight plan. So now that we're flying lower to the ground, it needs to make more passes so that it can actually stitch together those images when we import all of them to DJI Terra and make our final map. So it's really great that as you make these changes within the Pilot 2 application and to your flight plan, DJI is already thinking ahead and making other changes in the mission to make sure that your images and your data are captured properly so when you upload it you actually get a usable map now from here you've got other things to change you can change your safe takeoff altitude your maximum speed which using the mavic 3 enterprise is great it's got a mechanical shutter so that when it captures an image it reads out the entire sensor as one in one single instance rather than using electronic shutter that could give you motion blur so the speed really isn't an issue especially if it's if it's a nice bright sunny day so i would crank that all the way up to fly through your mission you can also change your course angle but dji does a great job of setting this up to be as efficient as possible that's the direct Direction the drone flies which in this case is long ways along the route or along the rectangle here so we'll leave it set to how it's been given to us we also have upon completion um the upon completion action so in this case we have the drone returning home and there's also a bunch of advanced settings as well to really tweak exactly how your drone flies within this mission but again dji does a lot of the setup for us i would say the main thing to change is your altitude based on where you'll be flying and again what resolution you want that final output to be okay so now that we've got this set up, let's head outside and check out some different hardware options. Okay, let's briefly touch on hardware here because I know there's going to be questions wondering which DJI drone and their enterprise lineup is the best to make a map with. And there's really two options. You've got the Mavic 3 Enterprise, which is what we set up our Penn's landing mission to run on. And we have the larger M350, which is their top of the line enterprise drone. Most of you, however, will likely be using the Mavic 3 Enterprise and for good reason. This drone is pretty much a replacement to the Phantom 4 RTK, which was once regarded as the de facto mapping drone. It has a four third sensor that shoots 20 megapixels megapixel photos and features a mechanical shutter. It has an estimated flight time of over 40 minutes and has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance for peace of mind knowing that it can fly safely along its pre-planned missions. I mean, this little drone really is the new go-to option when it comes to mapping. For all those reasons, I'm going to be choosing the Mavic 3 Enterprise as our drone of choice to create this map of Penn's Landing, but just know that if your workflow requires a better point cloud or maybe a higher resolution map, there's always the option to upgrade to DJI's M350. Okay, so now that our mission is all set up and we've selected the drone that we want to use, we can finally now fly and collect our data. This is probably the more time consuming part of this entire process of making a map just because you've got to drive to your site, you've got to set your drone up, you've got to let the drone fly, you've got to pack things up and then drive back home, but it's still fairly easy as the drone handles everything for you that you've programmed in your mission. It will take off, it will fly, it will land, it's all again done for you automatically. To give you a quick understanding of what to expect when you show up, on site, you've set up your drone and you've done your pre-flight, I want to bring you into the Pilot 2 application here on the main flight screen. So you'll see that we have our mission all loaded up and in order to start, we'll press on the play button in the top left corner. This brings you into the pre-flight check area, which gives you an understanding of your drone's status and all of the different parameters set for this flight. This shows before every single flight and it's a good way to just make sure that everything is set properly for your drone for the mission that you're about to take. 
Now, once you tap on next, it'll bring you to your mapping checklist. This gives you an understanding of what the drone is going to do on this mission. So it's going to show you its estimated duration, how long it's going to fly, what the resolution of your map is, how many photos it's going to take, and it gives you the option to make some last minute changes as well. So you can change your camera mode, your signal lost action. You can create a new folder just for these photos taken. You can turn on de-warping. There's so many things you can change here, but if everything looks good to you, you can go and press on upload flight mission after it uploads you can press start and then the drone is going to embark on its mission now from this point the drone is going to go and take off and the data doesn't stop this is one of the main reasons why i love using the pilot 2 application it gives you all the data you could ever want at your fingertips right here on your remote controller so up in the top left corner it'll give you the ability to pause the mission if you wanted to so let's say there might be a cloud passing over and you want to let that dark area pass through you can go and press on pause the drone will stop you can let the cloud pass through and then press play and the drone will pick right up where it left off from and at the bottom it gives you so much information in regards to your telemetry so it gives you your position in terms of latitude and longitude it gives you your speed your altitude your distance how many photos you've taken it also gives you a progress bar to kind of see how much longer your drone is going to be in the air for and of course it gives you an estimated time remaining that the drone is going to be flying for now i want to show you guys something in the bottom right corner that there is the vision assist feature and what's really cool is that even though the camera is pointed straight down taking photos of the ground i can see what's directly in front of my drone now the mavic 3 enterprise has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance so it's always going to be able to look out for obstacles but i can also put my eyes on the camera looking directly in front of the drone while the main camera takes photos down below so again this really does give you a lot of information and from here you pretty much let the drone do its thing let it run through take all the photos it needs to let it come back land and once you have all those photos we can now move on to the next step which is actually processing them Now for the final piece of the puzzle, processing your data. Remember, this entire pipeline is handled first party by DJI through their apps, hardware, and software. So to stitch our photos together, we'll be using DJI Terra. I'll put a quick bit of information up here on the screen for you to quickly glance over because yes, you will need a PC and yes, you will need something that has a good amount of power to efficiently process these maps. Now I do not have the biggest and baddest PC on the market. It's a 15 inch razor blade that's a few years old. I usually edit my videos on my M1 Max Max. MacBook Pro, but this actually does get the job done for what I need in terms of my map processing, my image processing here with DJI Terra. What's interesting about Terra is that it actually uses your computer power to process and stitch all of your photos together into your map. There's a lot of these other softwares and platforms out there that have you upload photos through their servers so that they can process it on their end and then they just display it to you within like a web browser. But personally, I prefer to have my data handled on my own machine. I also prefer to just stitch it myself because if I'm out in the field with absolutely no internet connection, but I've got my razor blade, I can just process a map here directly on my PC without needing a super fast Wi-Fi connection to try and upload hundreds, maybe even thousands of photos that could be tens of gigabytes. So let's jump in here to DJI Terra and go over this final part of the entire process and actually make our map. So this is going to be the screen that you're greeted with when you open up Terra. I've got the map over here on the right side. I've got some of my projects here over on the left side. If you're going to be uploading like a brand new set of photos, you can start with new mission in the bottom left corner. Of course, this was just like a uh, regular mapping mission. So we can just tap on visible light because that's like you know, sun. Um, from here, I guess we'll just do a uh, DJI Terra test. That's what we will call our mission. And then we'll press on OK. Now from here, this is kind of like a blank slate. You'll see on the right side that I have all the different reconstruction methods, but I haven't chosen any information or any sort of uh, photos. So from here, we can choose individual photos in the top right corner, or we can choose a folder of photos. So I'm going to do add folder. It's going to bring up our file base here. We'll open up desktop. I've got my DJI Terra examples, and then pens landing is the folder we want to access. So we'll use pens landing, tap on select folder. Now it's going to go in, grab all those images. It's going to place them over our map here. And from here, we can choose what we want it to reconstruct. So we can choose a 2D map, a 3D model, and we can choose if we want it to work with DJI modify. Now, again, for the sake of this video, we're just making a 2D map. That's how we captured uh, this set of images. Remember, we captured it at a straight down gimbal pitch. We we're looking straight down to the ground. So we could probably process a rough 3D model out of this information, but you really want to have a gimbal pitch angle for a 
nice 3D model. So for the sake of this map, we're going to go ahead and reconstruct a 2D map. Now you can choose your resolution. You go high, medium, low. If you want to do a really quick uh, reconstruct with all of your images together, you could go and use low. But usually I'll just go with the highest resolution possible. Keep it on high. I'll keep my mapping scenarios just set as mapping scenarios. Um, the computation method I'll leave on standalone computation. And then if you go and drop down your advanced, you can also just leave the known coordinate system selected. Now from here, all that's left to do is just press on a start reconstruct. It will give us a small little pop-up that kind of gives us another checklist. You can see DJI likes their checklists. They have one before you press go for everything. But as you go down here, it just kind of gives you some information about the map that you created. It also gives some inf information about the processing from here. I mean, really, you can just hit OK. You can also hit do not show again. And now it's just up to the computer to construct this data. So if you look in the bottom right corner, it says 2D reconstruct. It'll start kind of spinning through and give you a percentage. It would be nice that if it gave us some sort of countdown timer, like how much longer it anticipates it taking. But it just gives us that in the form of a percentage. But I actually already did the due diligence and stitched it together so that we could look at it right here right now. So if we go back to the home by pressing up in the top left corner, you'll see it still reconstructs in the background. So as as we go and jump around to some different um some different uh files here some different maps it will still work in the background let's go over here to pens landing and of course this is the map that we constructed we can go we can zoom in we can see it in all of its high resolution glory i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to select uh the map again so i'm going to double press on it so now we actually get all the information about our map over here on the right side you can see right now it actually shows like where the photos were taken i'm going to go and deselect the camera icon in the top right corner so that it now just shows us the map and you'll see that we captured pretty much the entire area i do think over here they're intending to rip this section up as well so this will eventually change so it's nice that we kind of have this included in our map but this right here as you can see is the major part they're already starting to lay down some structures they're bringing in some material so it's cool that we now have this snapshot almost like a google map view of what this looked like at the time of when it was captured they're also going to be adding a cap over the highway here so you can see that they're starting to do some highway work over here as well this is where it's going to connect to the street and then also also right here in the middle they're starting to actually add their structures now if we wanted to go and view a 3d model version so in the top right corner you can toggle between 2d and 3d if i go and press on 3d nothing's going to happen because we haven't reconstructed a 3d model version but if it was there we could press on 3d model so yeah from here it's really awesome to be able to view this we can go and make some annotations and measurements so if we press on the measurement icon in the top right corner we can add some coordinates we could also find the distance between two points and we can also set up some area measurements as well going into our annotations there is also sometimes the ability to do uh, volumetric measurements but we're going to do uh, we're going to need to do a 3d reconstruction to get any sort of volumetrics which would be nice to measure stockpiles and stuff like that that are here on the site um, so yeah look guys that's pretty much it that covers everything you need to know about making a map from start to finish using dji's entire ecosystem i love the power of terra i love the fact that it is housed here on my own computer and it's also much less expensive than a lot of the other options out there that are going to bleed you dry every single month. I know that for this video, we just went over 2D mapping. I'll kind of give you a quick quick little snippet of 3D modeling here. So this is the SS United States in um, Philly. It's docked down in South Philly. From here, if we go ahead and jump into our mission, we've already got the 3D model loaded. You can go manipulate and look around at this all you want. This looks awesome. I mean, look at the fidelity of the ship, all of the intricacies of the different ironwork and the different ships, I mean, or the different decks. This really is impressive. But again, we're going to save this for another video to go over how to make 3D models just like this. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you've got any questions at all, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.